Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about why Ukraine is unique and is not just another day of global conflict. All right, so I have some incredibly wise people who uh, make some incredibly intelligent comments right down below, right? It happens all the time. Um, it's actually the greatest thing about my channel is uh, I, I, I intend to have a discourse, right? I want to talk with people who want to have a conversation about what's happening in the world. I'm giving my thoughts, and at the end I say, hey, what's your thoughts? And that, that's, that's the greatest thing about... Uh, there's two things about YouTube. One, you can have this great discourse. The other thing, I, I just I want to share this with you. One, uh, I say this with great, you know, care... Uh, okay, if you don't have a YouTube channel, if you don't, if you're not hitting video, you're silent. Okay, like Facebook is dying on the vine. Uh, like, if you haven't noticed, video is winning the medium war, right? Like, okay, print is darn near dead. Um, if you want to do a podcast, you better start doing a video and just kick the audio out. It's, it's literally an app. I have no idea why anybody is wasting their time doing podcasts anymore. And and posts on social media, with the maybe the exception of Twitter, uh, really don't matter. Like, video is the medium now. So, like, one of the reasons why I speak publicly is I think speaking publicly, like, routinely is a basic life skill now. I don't think people have figured this out, but it is, right? And if you're not, you're really silent. And nobody should be silent today. So... I would encourage you to consider if you're not, you know, if you don't have your own YouTube channel, I would consider you to, to consider doing it. I will give you a warning. It's not easy. The moment you put up your, the moment you say boo, people are going to say wrong, <laughs> which is harsh and, and, and dealing with that is its own thing, right? Okay. Well, let, let's keep going here. So I want to explain to you today why Ukraine is so unique and special and is not just another day at the global, global confrontation table. Okay. So in my comments below, uh, there are people who say, Scott, why are you worried about this? What's the problem now? Why does it, why are you so upset about this now? There have always been wars. There have always been nations that, um, you know, that persecute one religion. That nothing here is special. Nothing here is new. Wrong. Wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. All right. So first of all, uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to tell you somebody else who said it because a lot of people are just like, oh, Scott, you're just a crank, you know, spouting off about politics. Well, first of all, I do have a political science degree. I earned it in 1992 from Millersville University. Um, so I know a little bit about this ain't my first rodeo, right? Like, so I know a little bit about politics. And um, yeah, I, got, I got the sheepskin to prove it, right? Like, so, um, but there are some people who are saying the same thing, I, who, who are saying the same thing I am, that, that this, this is unique. So the Ukraine situation is 100% unique and 100% unprecedented. Okay, so I'll I'll give you the I'll give you the some better sources than me. All right, here we go. All right, so I listen to Slate Political Grab Fest. Uh, Slate Political Grab Fest is really special. It's the best way to get your news. They do an hour every week. They do a fantastic job. I've been listening to them for 15 years. Seen them live many times. All right, so here, here's here's the kicker. Here's what they said. David Plotz, Harvard graduate, CEO of multiple companies. He's been the CEO of multiple companies, okay? Brilliant, genius, author, right? He's talking to Emily Bazelon. She teaches law at Yale University. She's a lawyer who is an author. Who, she, she's a... She's a lawyer who doesn't lawyer anymore and instead writes books and is also a genius, right? Like, and they're both talking to John Dickerson, a world-class journalist who personally interviewed Donald Trump while he was president, right? Like, and he's from the University of Virginia and he's an author and he's a genius, right? Like, so this is Ivy League straight up genius authors, right? You know how they opened the podcast this week? David Plotz says to Emily Bazelon and John Dickerson, he says the following. Um, he said specifically that the Ukraine invasion, the Ukraine invasion is the fourth most significant, is the fourth time in this century we have seen an event which has, which looks like it can or will rewrite 
world history overnight. It's only the fourth event. The first event was 9-11. The second event was the presidency of Donald Trump. The third event was the pandemic. And this is the fourth event and that this you and he said specifically this Ukrainian this Ukrainian inv- this this the invasion of Ukraine right looks like it could rewrite world rewrite world politics overnight there you go right you know what john dickerson said to that john dickerson then you know a couple sentences later responds and says yeah i was reading um the state of the union from woodrow wilson so in 1970, in 1917, World War One popped off. I'm paraphrasing here, but he says World War One popped off. You know what? You know what Woodrow Wilson said in a State of the Union directly before World War One uh, popped off in 1917. Woodrow Wilson said the following. He said, "We are in a settled state of peace among the nations." Directly before the world erupted into World War One, all right. Woodrow Wilson said, "It's all good. There's peace all over the world. We live. We live in a settled state of peace among the nations." He was shockingly wrong. Shockingly wrong. All right. Couldn't. Could not have been more wronger. All right. So, what I'm telling you is, so here's why Ukraine is so different, okay? This is a developed nation being attacked by another developed nation. And, in addition to that, one of these developed nations has the specific tool that forced Indiana Jones to jump into a refrigerator. Like, this ain't, this isn't some, you know, this isn't some skirmish with nations that you know have militaries made out of patchwork uh, uniforms, and half their military equipment is uh, you know is used pickup trucks from all over the world, right? This isn't this isn't some skirmish that's happening somewhere, right? This isn't a slow burn. You know, after people talk about Afghanistan, this isn't some slow burn, twenty year low heat, right? The scale, the speed, the scope of what is happening in Ukraine is truly, truly unique, right? It looks exactly like an Archduke Ferdinand situation. Now, here's the problem with that, right? It, with, here's the problem with this looking like an Archduke Ferdinand situation, okay? This is a very bad situation, and the reason why is we had World War I. We had World War II, okay? I read about World War I. I know more about World War I than I do about World War II. I can tell you right now, World War II ended horribly badly. Like, America ended up using the same the same tool that forced, uh, you know, um, Indiana Jones to jump into a refrigerator twice, right? Like, that, that did not end well. It was a terrible, terrible ending to a terrible, terrible event, right? World War I, I can tell you right now, now... I have a degree in political science, but it was very difficult for me to understand uh, World War One, and I never really understood it until I read a graphic novel comic book. It's called The Hazardous Tales of Nathan Lane. The book is called Treaties, Trenches, Mud, and Blood. And I understand the World War One, 1970 from reading that book. That book explained to me, literally graphically, um, how World War I was structured and what happened in World War I, right? And the way it did it was it represented each nation by creating them as an animal with a specific hat so that it could you could understand, right? And one of the things that book just said was World War I was a meat grinder. It just ground humans to the bone by the millions, right? It was one of the worst atrocities in human history, right? Well, here's the thing, all right? Um, you might have a friend uh, who gets their 420 from some local dealer, right? But there's a gentleman by the name of Snoop Dogg, right? His 420 makes what, you know, whatever your friend gets from their, you know, dealer look like nothing, right? It's stronger. It's more powerful. It's way more dangerous, right? We did World War I. We did World War II. When we come at this again, 
the weapons that are going to be used, <laughs> you ain't never seen anything like this. Like, we, none of us have, right? And this is real. So do not squawk at me in the, you know, in, in the comments below saying this is just another day at the global confrontation table. Nothing special here, right? There's all these atrocities. Why are you worried about this one, Scott? I'm worried about this one because it is unprecedented unprecedented right this ain't gonna look they might slap a late honestly after this thing's done there might be there, there might not be anybody around who's capable of forming letters and words right like uh, uh, forming letters and numbers there might be nobody else to scratch the ww one i i i on the wall this is different this is not another day at the, at the global confrontation table. This is different. The scale, the speed, the scope of it. And the people who are telling you not to worry, they don't know what they're talking about. There is definite, real reasons to worry here. There is real stakes, right? And I'm saying that, and guess what? Uh, the Harvard graduate said to a Yale grad, said to a Yale graduate, and, and, and was witnessed by a University of Virginia graduate that ain't nothing like this happened in a long time and that this is very unique. And the scale, and you know, and, and the reality is this ain't, this ain't another day at the, confront, at the global confrontation table. There is something unique happening here, right? So that's my point. If you, if you think I'm a little overwrought about this situation, I'm not, you're not paying attention. This is different. All right, this is unique. This is unprecedented, truly. All right, so now, all that's dark. Here's the reality, right? The one thing that is that we have some clarity in here. There is only one person in the world responsible for this mess. It is Vladimir Putin and no one else. And while and that clarity gives us a chance to finally squash useless, unnecessary divisions and put up a dividing line between us and the one villain on this planet who needs to be focused on and needs to be recognized for the villain he is. All that's my opinion. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. Nolan has been surpassed.